Welcome to Business Talk here on Business Tech, our first show for the new year, uh, the year of the tiger. What is in store for banks? Uh, that's all we're going to be discussing now. I think many of history's watershed moments, if you think about it, the printing press, the steam engine, the internet, were only really recognised as major changes in hindsight. But I think in banking, there is this real-time recognition that the COVID pandemic has irrevocably changed the industry. And if you look at 2020 and 21 as the years that the, the COVID pandemic forced banks to embrace change, I think this year is going to be the year in which we see that change really become institutionalised and this uh, new normal that we keep on talking about uh, starts to emerge. So uh, what is it that uh, some of the best banks are doing to rise to this, not only to this challenge, but to take this opportunity? We've invited Jacques Siliers, who's CEO of FNB, uh, one of the serial innovators uh, in the retail banking space in the country, to share his thoughts through the pandemic and beyond. Jacques, welcome to the show. Okay, thanks for having me. Now, uh, the pandemic obviously required banks to adapt to think on their feet, to move everyone off-prem and start to get familiar with teams and to operationally support their clients as well. In what ways has FMB changed the way in which it operates to accommodate all of this, to accommodate not only your staff needs, but your client needs as well? Yeah, it's like a big, uh, big topic. And as you say, I mean, there's, a, there's clearly a big impact uh, because of COVID. But I think if you stood back, I mean, the impact to our, our industry um, was in play, you know, just, you know, irrespective of whether COVID happened or not. And I think, you know, you would have seen over the last two or three decades of the modernization at play in financial services more broadly, not just banking, um, you know, how products get, get produced and how the distribution happens in our world. Um, really, it's been, it's been, a, it's been a, a phenomenal a phenomenal journey that we've been on and clearly we've played our part to, to also try and be responsive to the changes of the needs and and internally we often uh, reflect on our journey over 183 years you know on the 184th year now of our enterprise you know how we've just had to, over the years adapt to the new tools of trade and the new ways of doing things and and uh, clearly that's a that's a, a constant journey so uh, the adapting to the new modern approach to especially consumerism, and we internally also reflect to businessism, right? Uh, because we realize that consumers want things differently and businesses want things differently. And, and amongst others, we need to uh, make sure that those tools and products are, are enabling. So a great journey for us, awesome stuff, and uh, lots of road, 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 lots of stuff to still do, but, uh, but we're yeah. on the front foot into it. Yeah, and I think FMB was one of those banks that was on the front foot heading into the pandemic. When you talk about uh, digital banking and and the app was always out there in front in the South African marketplace. Now, you know, it's almost uh, as if all the competitors over the last few years really realized this need and how inexorable this move is. And as we hopefully approach the end of the pandemic, touch wood wherever I can, I mean, how do you expect the banking industry will change in a post-pandemic world? Um, so I think there's a there's a there's an interesting which um, people can make out of out of the the experience. I mean, clearly there's a lot of financial imagineering, if you want, if you like, to to keep our value propositions current and to make sure that, that certainly from a financial service perspective, we've got we've got things out there that can help satisfy uh, our people, our customers' financial needs. And then, and then the enablement to deliver it um, as, as adjusted. And what's nice is that certainly COVID has helped us to accelerate those. So, so we, you know, in a normal world, we would have thought that the migration adjustment would still take another five or so years before the new ways of doing things get penetrated and really get adopted. And most things, you'll know, you always get early adopters um, who are important in our lives. And then we've got this sort of big chunk of our client base that sort of follow once things get get real momentum and get trusted. And then there's some laggards that unless you don't switch off the checkbook, people will still be using it and still be wanting them. You know, so so what the, the pandemic has allowed us to do is to accelerate that program. And obviously, you know, not just us, but the industry was able to actually, you know, deal with some of the legacy stuff that we didn't, we knew that wasn't going to, you know, be part of our future. Mm. Now, we're no, we're not unique. I think many industries have, have had this opportunity to look at what the new world allows. The retail world have a traditional retail model, and now you have a sort of an Amazon platform models. Uh, you know, that's a great example. Or even 
the transport industry has got traditional taxi models and now there's an Uber models. Um, so that ability to do demand aggregation and, and supply and demand matching and you know, ecosystem and marketplaces, all of those things are very powerful concepts, but you need to reconfigure your platform. And you know, if you're not configured for it, then clearly you can't participate in it. So, so we, we love the, the migration that's happening and the pace at which it's happening. And, and, uh, and we love the, you know, clearly we won't be the only ones doing this. There's a whole market, very exciting, lots of, you know, entrants and uh, new ones and old ones who are also participating in this. So it's just great to be in an industry that's so vibrant and, and people are bringing such value propositions to the market that, uh, that ultimately for, for the consumer and for the market, it's great. And I'm smiling because you say if you don't have the platform to take advantage of it, I think so many banks uh, pre the pandemic were struggling with that, with their legacy IT systems, with uh, some things that were designed in the kind of DOS era in the 80s and early 90s. And you really need to have the latest software, the latest technology to be able to be nimble in your platform approach. And that's something I recall sitting down at a media lunch with you prior to the pandemic that FNB was really focusing on. And uh, and when it comes to SMEs, to, to hone in on that particular market segment, you were recently awarded the accolade of best SME bank in South Africa and Africa at the Global SME Finance Awards last year. So, I mean, that's a that's a huge feather in your cap. What do you think sets FNB's SME division apart from the other banks in Africa? Yeah, we're very proud of the team and um, for, for the uh, the commentators who watched our journey over the last few years, um, you know, if you think First Trans um, sort of creation of, of, of the First Trans group, you know, obviously at that time, FNB was quite a clumsy old bank. So two decades ago, we had uh, we had to start modernizing, you know, the value extraction out of these big scale, you know, participants, uh, you know, and industry uh, players are, are unbelievably lucrative. Um, and that journey to modernization led us first to the middle market in consumer space, where you all know that we got a little bit of momentum and energy into our value propositions in that little in the middle market at, in a retail level, and then we quickly pivoted uh, that 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 opportunity uh, extraction into uh, into the middle market business, and and what we were fascinated what was fascinating is is just look at the dynamic of what people out there were looking for and today. You know, there's a, a great enthusiasm in our value propositions because we realize that in this business market, in the small SME spaces, it's, you know, me and my business are the same thing. You know, there's no, yeah. uh, traditionally you would have find, found real, real fault lines between organizations where there was a, a real retail experience and a real business experience. It's stupid things like, you know, if you go this side, you need a different password and a different login and that side you have to KYC yourself again. You know, and the bankers that help you can't help you with your this relationship with that stuff. So we've over the years worked hard on on getting that that emotional link right, working back from the client, and trying to leverage all the automation and innovation that we had at a personal level, and somehow finding uh, you know inspiration for what we can bring to the market in the business space. Now, there are topics are slightly different. In today's world, as you know, many people have a side hustle around their you know their lives. They might have a core income somewhere. But there's always alternative income streams, and it's and it's a big, it's a very complex story to get right. So, so we'd like to think the integration of our platform experiences, our customer storylines around uh, the pain points that are in your life. You know, we, we, we you know, it's, uh, you know, consumers don't like to stand in queues for long, and so business people also don't like to stand in queues for long. Um, and so that innovation across these disciplines, uh, broadly, holistically, in financial service, that's a very, very big theme. The other theme in, in business is clearly we know that there's a long haul, right? Now, we don't always get it right. Make no mistake about it. There's lots of examples where we, where we drop the ball, but we really are fixated on on helping people navigate life. And, um, you know, there's a this helpfulness thing that we have had for years in our, in, our, in our vocabulary. Clearly, in today's lives, where we've got access to so much technology analytics and, 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 and ecosystem uh, um, leverage, we can do so much more for our businesses than just opening them a bank account. And so, so what we've had to do over the years is innovate those value propositions that go with our, our value props. That people really see us as part of their journey, almost like see you as, as a GPS on your back, helping you navigate, helping to, to unlock the frustrations as opposed to create the frustrations. It's not perfect. There's always more to do. Uh, we have this constant struggle between the regulatory needs, our own experiences, our own risks. Yeah. Um, but I think, but I think the the momentum in the team 
to bring out clear value propositions that really help businesses on the ground and having having expertise in the local communities to support that. You know, people always say banks are dead or branches are dead. We don't see it like that. We get very emotional about um, 182 year storylines, you know, where we yeah. we build value propositions, sustainability into our our messages so that we that, that businesses want to be with us, uh, not because we they have to, but because we truly are there to to have their backs in, in whatever challenge they they or opportunity they see around their doors. And that's a it's not a new thing. It's just a continuous effort and leverage of new technology to make that happen. Well, I'm so pleased you mentioned the seamless integration and kind of going from one part of a bank to another and KYCing again, because I often think the word silo was actually invented in a bank somewhere. And it, it can be the most frustrating thing. But to hear that a bank is taking that on board and thinking about how they can make these um, experiences between retail and business a lot more seamless, uh, I, I think it feels intuitive, a lot more difficult to achieve. Uh, and if it was easy, um, you know, other banks would have done it uh, a long time ago. But, you know, as an FMB client, what I've found, and, and to your point about um, helping people navigate their lives, uh, the, the quickness and the responsiveness you built into the app on the nav function, uh, things like helping you with your vehicle license um, and, and all of that when we've got the the, the printer back from Germany. Uh, but I mean, those things really do speak to a bank that is is operating in a far more agile way than many others have in the past. Now, it, it's part of the brand that you've built up. And I think FMB's brand, you know, how can we help you has, you know, always been about problem solving. You were recently crowned the most valuable brand in the annual Cantar Brands rankings. And uh, Jeremy Sampson on my radio show always says, brands are about reputation, but they're about relevance. Uh, and so how have you remained relevant? Why is it important for a bank like FMB to build this strong brand image? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, so, uh, that on its own is a whole conversation that we could get stuck on here today. I mean, are we we think of, of our relationship with our customers as, as, a, as, a, as a very big privilege, actually. Um, you know, tools come and go, products come and go, but but actually what is very special as an anchor for our innovation and our value creation is, is this realization that, that there is hardly anything more emotional than, than your financial, you know, reality. Mm -hmm. uh, people are, um, to test it, you know, people will be prepared to share their Facebook pictures and, and turn the screen around. But if you ask them if they can just quickly show you their, 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 their banking app login and their accounts, there's a lot of emotion in finance, you know, and, and our opportunity is is to be there for that emotion. And you, you refer to, um, you know, just challenges that uh, society faces from time to time. It could be, you know, like in the, you know, in your example, it was uh, was 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 nav car related as well. People sort of get their their uh, their uh, license discs and stuff renewed. But actually, if you think about just the normal banking world, the moment of truth um, that's contained in most financial products um is a very special moment that we don't take for granted and so as an example if uh, let's say uh, uh, someone is standing in a queue and having taken a taxi for four hours or you know to, to go to come do some groceries on a sunday the moment of truth for us is is that payment right yeah um, and and we we traditionally or i guess global banks always miss the opportunity to impress in the moment of truth to make the transaction happen, first of all, to make sure that you know your infrastructure is calibrated such that, in theory, nothing should go wrong, right? You should just approve everything. But but things happen, and for example, customers forget their pins. And in the old days, we would have said, okay, now it's fine, we can give you a pin, but you must come to the branch for that on you know tomorrow. And so over years, we've tried to sweat the pain points that we offer solution for when things don't go wrong in that moment that we've got we've got alternatives to have as backups. And that's a classic one we say, don't worry, just stand aside, open up your app, view pin, come back in the queue and we've saved the day, right? Those are the innovations that we've done over the years that actually just solves the most basic pain points. Um, the first one we got right was just to send you a daily SMS of your transaction. You know, there was a time where people used to wait a whole month running in the dark, wait for your statement to come before you knew what happened in your account, right? <laughs> and, and so, so we've we sweated these moments of truth, and our teams are so focused, whether it's business related or uh, or retail related. Uh, you know, uh, to apply for a home loan for us is not an it's not a it's not a process. It's not like an application that you fill in. It's an emotional moment where 
someone has either got a dream that they want to make happen or they're vulnerable or someone is looking over their shoulders to see, to see if they're good enough to marry their daughter. Uh, you know, those are, those are moments that, that if you're just a normal bank and you just process and you wait 30 days and you send the other approve or decline, we, we don't see ourselves like that. We want to sweat those moments and really, really impress and differentiate in those moments. And that ultimately, we believe, are the things that society then loves you for and they support you for. And you don't always get it right. Things break. And when they break, do you own up? Do you fix quickly? Do you recover on the service? Um, because technology will actually only always get you to a certain, yeah. you know, to a certain point. And then to support that with real people and that human touch and that human expertise to get people through, you know, from A to B. It's like it's a reason why if you're taking your personal capacity, you use the you use a, a navigation tool to get you to home. You know where your house is. The problem is you want to you want to you want to minimize the risk of obstacles, right? So you would want to see where either the traffic jams are or something. And so that that uh, the new tool sets allow us, you know, to do so much more to help people navigate mm. the, the the stuff to make their dreams come true and to make uh, the challenges go away. So that's what we focus on a lot. And and it's great to see that at least from a market perspective, when what we work on for the whole year gets recognized, gets appreciated, gets celebrated. That ultimately, otherwise, why, you know, why would you do things? Just innovate for the sake of innovation. We, we really love the fact that we do things that we feel make a difference. And that innovation word, I think it, it becomes a bit hackneyed when you, when you speak in business about innovation, but really runs to the core of what sets you apart in an environment, as, as you said, it's regulated. You know, you are constrained by what you can and cannot do. There are other platforms. There's big tech coming in to eat the bank's lunch. There's fintechs. And so you have to innovate. But it's a recognition that in that innovation, you might fail. As you said, you don't always get it right. And you constantly, as a bank, as an organization, you built this culture of innovation. So I'd love to know, Jacques, you've recently launched two new SME solutions, FMB Web Store, FMB and uh, Android Speedpoint. So how do you think about innovating? How do you approach this in the business? Because it doesn't just happen and certainly doesn't happen naturally in an environment that is um, got this legacy of being gray shoed and doesn't take risks and fair where the bank is and all of that. So how do you think about innovation? Yeah, I think if you had to ask anyone in our organization whether they see themselves as bankers, I don't know, you might find one or two or three that actually do that. But mostly what we're, um, we're excited about is just this ability to make a difference. And I think our teams are, uh, are, are privileged that we've got access to resource at scale. Most innovators will tell you they come up with great buttons to do use or a nice screen, or, but they don't have scale to play that into. So what's nice about our world is um, is this modernization agenda and the innovation to get to get things uh, you know created first of all and then and then to see the benefit of it play out at scale you know modernizing these platforms you know, taking three pages contract down to one page you know if it's just one contract that's not really a big uh, differentiation but if you could do that at hundreds of thousands of impacts and you know you affect so many customers I think that's great so your your question about innovation we we have fortunately. You know, over the years, um, built up a big culture of, of innovation. We, we we don't see it as someone's. There's not an innovation department in the organisation. You know, everyone wakes up uh, with a deeply invested uh, promise uh, to always try and look for new new ways of doing things, to be curious, to find alternatives, and then we we empower our teams to play. Right, that's exactly what you know. If if you don't allow that participation and that resource and ability to play. With uh, technology and and data, you know, ultimately you will you will struggle because you have this big bureau bureaucratic uh, organisation. We are a very distributed responsibility for it. And what's great about it, what the innovations that come at us, you would never have thought that it comes at us, you know, from which areas it happened. But that organisation also needs to be set up so that you don't create confusion. So as an example, we think of ourselves, you know, if you were a if you were thought of. I mean, we first of all think that financial service will be around for, for for like centuries to come, right? Unless someone finds a different way of of configuring, you know, who owns what. I think, you know, or making commerce work. It's going to be about financial services, and there'll be new participants. No different than, you know, I often use my speeches. We use uh, the bicycle as an analogy. I mean, there was a. I mean, bicycles were started almost as, as almost as long as you know we've been around. Uh, the bicycle's been around, right? And 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 there was so many innovations along the way where people said the bicycle is dead, 
you know. And still today, there are people in the bicycle industry. And they came at it from either a product supply, which is you either in the handlebar industry side or in the, in the wheel selection or the gears business. We're a holistic financial services place. So we have all of the components. And the trick with innovation is to, is to try and mo- keep your, your tool set modernized so that customers can enjoy the ride. And, and clearly in our world, we need to have big ones and small ones and fast ones and slow ones. And, you know, and, it, and it's a fit for purpose. And if you build your platform such that it can scale and you can, you know, you can have a modular experience, then and things fit on each other and things can integrate in each other, then ultimately that customer experience, you know, improves so much. And financial service today is so integrated into our lives and so many different ecosystems we have to participate in that, uh, that that's, like, that's like the thing, you know, we need to do is to, is to just keep the whole modernized. And you also refer to a concept of legacy. Now, now we actually love some of our legacy. Some of our legacy actually is is really uh, being looked after well. There's a big difference between, uh, let's call it, looked after legacy and neglected legacy. Mm. Um, neglected legacy is, 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 is sad, and that obviously needs big investments to replace it. And stuff. But other things, actually, if you've looked after well, if you've oiled them well, and the teams have looked and you've, and you've maintained them well, they can actually stretch you know, the lifespan, and it's the same with an ATM. You know, if you care and you service an ATM well, it lasts you a whole bunch of years longer than the ones that you don't care for. So code is the same, our systems are the same. Um, ultimately, if you look at our ecosystem of enablement, and no no bank in the world, even the new entrants will tell you they've already got legacy, because uh, no matter, just as soon as you've launched something, it's already, you know, it's already got a date stamp to it. So so our job is to keep ourselves modernized, to keep the systems going, and to and to always be able to respond to the challenge of the time or the opportunities of the time. Uh, I can give you a quick example of that. Let's say there's a Apple Pay innovation and you can't respond to that. Then you would have a, a system that is stuck. It could take you a month or two longer to get it done. That's not the end of the world because you've got other priorities or something. But if your systems and your setup um, prevents you from participating in ecosystems and marketplaces where the, where the consumer and the business is going, then clearly you would, uh, you would yeah. really be stuck. Uh, and traditionally in financial services, they had uh, we've had big challenges in that. For example, distribution models that kept us back, or value propositions that couldn't adjust. Uh, and and I'm just grateful for the for the setup in the first gen organisational construct that allows us to really innovate and respond. And we've got mm. fortunately also a very healthy re, you know sort of resource base. And so if something's important, we can fund it and we can make it happen, right? Um, and uh, and that's a really good space to be in for our business. And that is what is so attractive about playing in the in the kind of in the traditional ecosystem, so to speak. When you look at trends, I mean, from your vantage point uh, as a CEO, you've got to think strategically. You've got to have one eye on the horizon to see what's coming up next. What do you see as the big trends that are going to be impacting in banking in a big way this year? Yeah, so uh, I guess short-term trends and medium-term trends and long-term trends and and all of those are. Are fascinating concepts. I, I think from an industry perspective, we're really working hard across the industry to modernize, um, you know, what we often refer to as the payment architectures. That's a critical thing. You know, payments, unfortunately, is not something that you can just do yourself. You can add some some variations to value propositions yourself, but typically our, our industry needs to modernize the payment rails and continue to modernize the payment rails. We're very proud of our industry. If you think about it globally, there's still some I mean, for those who travel, will tell you that you know, right around the world, we are seen uh, to be a differentiator on having enabled technology at a at a at a at a, at a quite an innovative and and fast paced approach. So I don't think we we're we're behind, but we certainly want to set up payments, you know, for the next phase. And and that next phase clearly has got a big complexity to deal with as markets need to readjust. Uh, you know, there's uh, there's ecosystems that participating in payments that weren't part of our value propositions and in value chains a few years ago, it clearly is commercial models models that must also modernize to facilitate that. I think that's a, that clearly is a space where, you know, as a bank, we need to set ourselves up that we can participate with some of that activity ourselves, but recognizing that there's a whole world that we need to interface that is coming out of fintechs and, you know, and the telco games. And so there's a lot of activity in that space. Then we think that the 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 real Holy Grail is going to be customer centricity, and it continues to be the challenge for many people out there. And we think 
the approach that is going to come and get more resonance is this. If you think about platform plays like a Spotify does for music, where, where, where you truly get your playlist in the morning and people really get your data right and they really get your, your, your moments right and they can really predict and help you and facilitate you and build trust around, around you know, the navigation you need to do between whatever financial solution you've got to use in your business capacity or in your personal capacity. That's a, it's a space where if you've got your data in the right places and you're, and you're, and you're working back from the customer and you're not fixated on the sort of traditional product pushes or distribution models and incentive schemes around, uh, around REM remuneration worked in those worlds, um, it's a big pivot, but I think the forces are going to be so fast that everyone that, uh, that yeah. if you're truly customer centric, the systems and enablement is going to is going to be exciting to watch. And some 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 organisations will get it right, and uh, and be inspirational and all this all for that. And and some are going to be kind of going to be struggling and, and be shown up. So we we think we're on the front foot also in that topic of we call it internally money management or helping you navigate life and that nav money stuff. And it's just incredible yeah. the uptake and the demand that that's got. And again, we won't be the only solution in the market, but clearly we would like to have. A big big value prop and innovate there and it allows we are a very unique position because we have you know investments and in insurances and telecommunications and credit and payments all integrated into our value propositions in clients that's different than you know the traditional partnerships or joint ventures or you know multiple brands that came at customers and you didn't quite know how yeah. that works so we work back from it's a little bit like amazon where you know once you if you if you worked into it walked into a traditional retailer I mean, I don't think, you know, they, they won't really know that you, you that you even were there, because yeah. you know, unless you there's a foot, you know, uh, a, a breadcrumb that 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 can spot you and can see that you're there, uh, linked to your profile, no one will know you. But in in Amazon, every you, you can't see the catalog unless you log in, right? Yeah. And yeah. and I'd rush to get to get people onto our platforms and to get. It's not to exploit them. It's actually to to protect them and look after them and and. And remove the vulnerability that that typically is constrained in yeah. people flogging you products and getting stuff to you off, off platforms and and you know on on side processes. So so those two I think are the big themes for for us that we're working on at the moment and and clearly the innovation on all our value props that sets it up. So mm. but it's a it's a big thing. The cost basis in financial services is a is a third thing. Uh, you know we all know that that's a big topic to work on and. And fortunately, technology, uh, you know, is allowing us at least line of sight of of an ability to remove a lot of the cost basis and frictions. But it's also costing a lot of money to modernize. You know, for yeah. me to close a branch, uh, I, I mean, to to downscale a branch also costs money because it's capex to fix it, right? Yeah. Um, and so, so there's a there's a big agenda out that that has to adjust all the cost basis of financial services. And again, we think that we've got a line of sight of of a, of a of a runway there that's going to that we would also be able to impress the market mm, to improve that cost to income ratio over time and you know as as you talk about uh, all of those trends and and how they're emerging and playing uh, i'm often drawn to a comparison between who are going to be the winners in the space and who who potentially are going to be the laggards and losers i've always felt that banks have a, a big advantage in that if you're an insurer who's trying to get people onto your platform how often do you actually engage with people at a time of claiming having an accident not very often hopefully as a bank you're engaging with people almost daily people like to log in if you're offering them services if you're tracking an investment if you you know all of these additionals you're getting to interact with that client on a far more frequent basis and i still have an unnamed insurance company trying to sell me a kaiser chief uh, kaiser chief's insurance policy now if they knew me they would know that i'm a pirate supporter firstly but secondly that i also love liverpool and these things are publicly known you share them in kind of social media um, yeah. and space yeah. and and yeah. and so it's about realizing that you've got this data at your disposal so uh, jacques uh, really fantastic to get your insights into um, the business into what you see the big trends are and uh, how you felt COVID has shifted the space in the banking landscape. Uh, and hopefully we'll have you back on Business Talk in the not too distant future. Have a fantastic year. Thank you for having us and, uh, and hopefully we'll, we've added some value and let, let me know if there's anything I can help with.
absolutely. I've uh, been uh, a long time customer, so uh, you'll definitely be hearing from me if there's anything uh, good or bad that I'm enjoying about the brand. Uh, that was Jacques Saliers, uh, CEO of FMB, uh, sharing a little bit more about uh, one of the top innovative banks' uh, journey through COVID and into the digital world here on Business Talk.